story, you know what I'm Diamonds and gold, yeah. Diamonds and gold, yeah, yeah. Diamonds and gold, yeah. Diamonds and gold, hey. Hang on my neck, yeah. Down to my chest. Welcome everybody back to Boost in Motion. I do appreciate you guys taking the time out to come look through this video. In this video, I'm gonna try to give y'all my 5,000 miles that I did on my 2018 Q50 3.0T Sport. This is the 300 horsepower version. I've also had a 2015 Q50 that was fully loaded. So I am coming from a place of experience and I'm gonna try to give you the guy's best detailed way if you're looking to get a 2018 in this upcoming year. All right, so let's just jump right into the video. Let's talk about the interior and see what's changed and what I like and what I dislike about this vehicle. First thing, they changed the steering wheel. Now, I like this steering wheel. It is a better looking steering wheel. It seems like they come, it's using the same type of design from the Mercedes. Um, it's a little bit harder than the old steering wheel I have, but it does heat up a lot quicker in the cold season when you put on a heated steering wheel. Also, they changed the shift knob. It's not heated or anything like that, and they should have changed the shift booth. So it does have a bit of a different look. I really wish this maybe might have lighted it up. I don't know. Maybe that's just a cheesy part of me. But everything else right there is still the same. Now, the dash, they did make a little bit of a difference. What I do like that they added was into the center console feature is that it shows your speed there digitally rather than use the analog. Before, they didn't have that on the 2015s, but now they have it here, and I really like that feature. Um, I have the auto sense in um. Uh, wipers too so that's a pretty cool feature when it rains but you know it is some stuff you don't really need but hey it's nice that they have it now let's move down up down to the center console the infotainment let's start at the top i my 2015 had this my 2018 have it and shoot even my 2007 g35x had this navigation so infinity you're obviously showing me that 10 years that you guys still use the same navigation now i'm not against it but you know what i understand y'all want to use what works but come on just just pay google maps just to do your just to do it just to do it just come on we tired of seeing this do something new we need the wow effect now second let's move on to the infotainment and or the center whatever crap this is um, it's still the same. Yes, I'm gonna beat on the car. Yes, I'm gonna beat on it. My 2015 had the same options and the 2018 same options. Infinity, we need an Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, whatever we call it. We need to have that more integrated because we want our phones to be able to either shadow whatever is shown here or something because whatever you guys are giving us isn't working. You still got a CD slot. Like, who uses CDs? Who uses CDs? This part remains the same from the 2015. Now, I don't have the um, the Bose. I have the stock regular system. On my 2015, though, I had the Bose system, which was pretty good. I really like it. And when I went to go get this car, I really didn't care too much about it. But once I've had the car for about 5,000 miles, now I'm like, you know what? I really wish I did have that music, the, the Bose system, because it did give them more bases and highs. But you know what? I got this car to be more of a performance-oriented car. Now, the heated seat functions, they work pretty well. So, I like it. There's a different option. They have the high, low, mid, and auto. So, I give them that. That works pretty well. But I really wish that they had a cooled seat option. Really. Like, come on, guys. Add a cooled seat option. A lot of the other competitors have cooled seats already. Um, one of the things that would happen pretty often, to just talk about some of the defects, is when I put the car in reverse... Brief, let's even just talk about the detail. Uh, daytime, you can see pretty well, but at nighttime, you cannot see out of this camera really well at all. It seems like my G35 showed really better at night vision compared to my 2015 and 2018. The same, they're still using the same designs with the swigger lines when you turn left and right. And also, I don't have the optional 360 camera on this one, but on my 2015, I did. So my recommendation to you guys is, if you're gonna get this car, um, I if you live in a really dense city, get the 360 camera. Reason being, because you can see what's in front of you on the side of you. Because it's just so cool just to see everything on the screen so you don't hit and bump and scratch up your car. Now that I only got the standard reverse camera, I do miss that. But if you do choose to get it, get that package. It it All that package literally just comes all together. Right? Now, um, what else I want to talk about? 
Uh, let's talk about, there's a thing going to have for the 2018s. You're going to be able to get lighted cup holders. There's going to be lights in here. And there's going to be lights in here. And there's going to be a little bit of lights up here and puddle lights on the outside. I chose not to get that stuff because I don't really care for it. But just to continue to move on, I want to talk about the sports seats real quick. Now, I had the comfort seats on my um my 2015 but now that i have the sport seats i've got to tell you guys it's way more comfortable because first thing it has this support here and it had the added bolstering here i really love that but i am also a six foot one six foot one inch man so i am a little bit over six feet now in my comfort seats uh even when i put it all the way down the low my head was still hit here. Now looking at this, I'm probably what, three to four inches away, but I can still go down a lot more and clear it. But in my comfort seats, I couldn't do that before. So that was definitely really annoying in my last uh, 2015. But in this car, I really love the com the sports seats. A-OK, -okay, I really love them. Really wish there was a cooled option, but hey, we can not get all we want, right? You know, it's budget. But um, a few other things I wanna jump into more about the interior is the rear once again not much room nothing really spectacular back there once again they have this feature here this this is the only ac that the, the rear people get the only ac they get period so terrible ac option for them there's no heated seat option back there for them at all <sighs> once again it's like you're getting bare bones compared to other competitors. You get so much. But in this case, it's like you just throw a person back there. I mean, I fit back there. Let me just let me go back there and just show you. Because this is just best way. Because I want you guys to have the best view without even having to go to the dealer. Right. So I'm six foot one. I have to put the chair technically all the way back. But look. I'm six foot one. I'm not fitting. I'm not fitting. This person would need to push it all the way forward. Maybe another five to six inches for my legs to fit. But headroom and everything, I'm perfectly fine. I've ridden in the back of my car a few times when there's a shorter person in the front. It's a comfortable ride back here, but there's really not much to do. There's no cigarette open, no, no cigarette plugs, none of that stuff. Just an ashtray and these little BS um, AC AC things. That's it. So let's just jump into the let's just jump to the trunk. Uh, I want to show you the room back there. Alright guys, here's my trunk. Yes, pardon. All the stuff that's the axle back. <laughs> I went food shop and left the brisk in there. Oil for the car and other like tools and utensils. But um what you see right now, I'm trying to show you the best depth that I can in the video. My trunk does not have the optional spare. My 2015 did have the optional spare. And this stuff would have sat a lot higher. The reason being is they build a shelf under here where they pretty much build nice it. Blue, bro. Thank you, man. They pretty much build it up another five inches, right? And this Luthen brisk would have sat up here a little higher. Really dislike that. So I really didn't have much trunk space, at least when it comes to depth. And also, the, the trunk only goes butt so far back. So this is my hand. You see how far I'm going back? I'm standing pretty much on the outside. So there's not much depth compared to, compared to other vehicles, but you know what? It can work, depending on it. Of, of, maybe one baby carriage can fit back there. That's about it. And depending on it, is, it ain't going to be easy just to fit it in there, to fit it across. Um, also, I do recommend this. Get, repeat, get the rear fold down seats. My last car had it, and I made sure that I did get it with this car. Because I put a lot of stuff in my trunk, long stuff. And when you get the rear fold down seats, you press on this. And it comes forward. Of course, you'll have to move the seat forward so the seats will all fall all the way down. But see, it's perfect. Perfect pass through, and there's also a pass through right here. Great, I love that feature. So, if you put a lot of stuff in your trunk, or at least long stuff, or you know, whatever it is, get the get that always. Repeat it. Always get that option. Very important. Hybrids don't have that too. Just want to let you guys know that. All right. Let's move on to the next thing. All right, everybody. To finish off the video. I want to talk about driving around this car. It's a 300 horsepower twin turbo vehicle. The transmission is pretty much damn there. It's a little different than the 2015 that I own, but 
I do like this transmission more, at least in the twin turbo motors, than the, tw the 2014 to 2015. It seems a bit more responsive and quicker to shift, but to compare to like BMW ZF transmissions, that's just like it's it's still the old torque converter that they use. But um, what I must say, comparing the 3.0T. I don't want to make this a comparison video, but because I've had both cars, um, I do like the torque in the twin turbo 300 horsepower versus the old VQ33.7 motor. Reason being is I don't have to rev it out. With the twin turbos, you get the torque and the passing power at the lower RPM, which is just way so much more better. Um, the transmission does shift a little smoothly, but I still got to say that unless you're changing your gears or using a paddle shift is, that you'll still sit there and you'll be confused. Like the transmission, if you let the transmission do what it's supposed to do, it's gonna be confused to shift. What I really dislike about the car is, um, let's get into it, let me just show you briefly. Um, you have personal, you have sport, you have standard, you have eco, and you have snow. And if you have the red sport, you have sport plus, which pretty much gives you more, it holds the gear a little higher, and it also have a bit more aggressive shifts, but they're nothing really that serious. So, because my friend has a red sport and I got to drive, so I got to see the difference. Um, me, ha when you have the 3.0 T uh, regular sport, then you're not going to get sport plus because the sport plus only comes on the red sports. Now, what I'm going to tell you guys to do is this is what you're going to do most of the time sport reason being if you put it in standard the transmission is lazy if you put it in eco the pedal the gas pedal is going to push back on you because it's trying to keep you from pressing the throttle bodies all the way open it's pretty much to save gas mileage and personal i don't really see a difference like yeah you can try to change up the settings where you would go into menu and you go to settings you go to vehicle wait that's not the right one <laughs> sorry guys um, you'll go to uh, Infinity Drive Mode Selector, and you can choose to pick Sport and Engine Transmission, and you can choose to pick the steering wheel Sport. Um, also, with the steering, if you have the Sport Plus option there, you see how it's a Sport Plus option there? If you have the Red Sport, it'll give you a Sport Plus option. Um, and also, Active Trace Control. Let me just briefly talk about that. If you get... So if you get this car, 2014 to 2018, turn off after traction, trace control. Turn this off. Reason being is it, it, it pretty much turns on your ABS system that depending on your turning, how, how you turn, not even aggressive, so just regularly daily driving. Reason being, the ABS would press on your rear brake pads just so to help you turn a little better. So if you're turning right, it'll press on the passenger a brake pad so that you can be able to make that turn a bit more easier and quicker. It pretty much helps it to aid it. But guess what? It eats up your brake pads. It happened on my 2015, turned it off, stopped eating brake pads, the rear brake pads so quick. This one, immediately turned it off, didn't want to deal with it. So that's what I want to recommend. Um, what I want to talk about with the power of this car is there, um, that you may, depending on what option you have, you may have, they might give you fake sound in the car. Now, I went through the options and I don't have the fake sound added, but if you have the Red Sports you're watching this video, just letting you know, whatever, whatever you're getting through the speakers or whatever sound you think you're getting, they added a fake sound to your Red Sport. That is not how it sounds. It's only on the side. If you go out, it sounds like a Honda motor, okay? Just want you guys to know that. But let's just jump into the video so I could just briefly just talk about the steering wheel and, and, and the feel of driving a car. Yes, I am lowered on um, BC Racing coilovers, but I was on stock suspension on both cars, and I know, remember how it feels. Um... What I before I get into the driving part, I'm gonna tell you right now, the ride comfort isn't too bad. Um, over regular small bumps, you barely really feel it. Heavier bumps, the car gets a bit uneasy because the rear sway bar is just so thin. Um, but I, oh, I think the rods, the suspension is really good, but the stock tires and the stock wheels are very heavy. But the stock tires really do suck. I don't know if they got the bottom brand. Dunlap, whatever crap tires, stock tires they have, but a lot of people complain about having blowouts relatively quick or getting nails really quick. So I would recommend getting a tire protection package if you're going to keep the stock wheels because um, it happens pretty often. I'm, I'm saying run flats, they do their job, but if you're not, if you don't have the optional spare, 
and you have a blowout, you're going to have to pretty much like get the car towed. And I don't like to be inconvenienced. I want to be able to, you know, right now I don't have a spare, so I'm going to have to buy a spare because at the point I wasn't thinking about this, uh, buying a spare, but I should have. Especially that I was going to go with aftermarket wheels, but um, I would recommend if you're going to keep with the stock wheels, get the spare tire package because you will have blowouts on the stock tires, all right? If not, what you can do is just swap out the um, OEM tires and put on some better aftermarket tires like from Continental or Michelin or any other brand that you want to look up out there for all seasons. Um, let's just jump into the video. I'm taking too long. <laughs> Now, my car is, it has the electronic steering. So I had electronic steering in my 2015 and it has the same electronic steering in my 2018. Um, I believe in this one though, they made it feel a bit more real compared to the last one. Cause in the 20, in my 2015, they made, when you put it into sport, the steering wheel felt a way way more um stiff this one it feels a bit more loose which i kind of dislike to be honest it feels good but i dislike it because i really wish i i had a little bit of the heavy steering wheel but when i drove in the red sports i realized that that sport plus in the steering is actually the heaviness that i had in my 2015 so i guess they made the sports the 300 horsepower ones a little bit less um heavy steering wheel for the 2018 models and they gave all of that stuff to the, to the Red Sport. So, hey, that sucks. But um, you're going to notice the lightness and electronic steering because it feels like you're driving a freaking Toyota a Camry or a Corolla. It's just so light. And, you know, for some people, that's really cool. But when you have a car that's putting out a sports car that you may be tuning for over 400, 400 horses, whatever the case might be, um, you need heavy steering wheel. You don't want to turn left and right too easy. Um, just driving here, like... I have it in sport, but I still feel as if the transmission is just still a bit too lazy. So I got to recommend you use this paddles all you want or you use the shifter so you know what gear you're in. So I, I really do that because it's just the easiest way to me. I know I'm cheeseburger shifting on you guys, so please don't get too upset with me. But it's just what works for me and what I believe is just the best to just do. Um, I'm going to pretty much bring this um, video to an end because I just wanted to show you a bit of a details on what I experienced with having this car for about 5,000 miles. I only did about two oil changes already. Nissan Infinity recommends doing the oil changes every 10,000 miles. I do not recommend that because the information I know is that no, don't do it. Change your oil every three to 5,000 miles, okay, people? Turbos burn oil okay not saying it's supposed to burn a whole heap of oil but depending on where you are and where you live depending with excessive temperature and everything you need to have you need you need to be able to put the proper oil in there so that this the, the oil though doesn't go past the oil season on the turbos and that your engines start burning oil because when these engines get too hot which they will run hot um the oil will get will start to thin out because this car uses 020 oil that's the lightest weight oil then know on the market they do it for fuel economy so you can get the best gas mileage and but in some cases well, to a few people the the motor depending on how much it broke in it pretty much ate the oil and then catastrophic failure i mean it's going to be on nissan infinity if they're telling you 10,000 miles but i recommend changing it every three to five thousand miles period with 020 and in the summer go with 530. um I didn't do much anything else with the car. The brake pads are perfectly fine. The new ones that came, that came with the car. But I changed them about a thousand miles ago to a more high temp, uh, high temperature and better, more race pad from Hawks. So if you want to follow my channel, I have all that stuff in the cars and on the side so you can check it out. I'm um, sorry for the ice cream music in the back. I just... I just want to take some time out and let you know about my experience with the car and what it's been. I haven't had any real issues with the car. No check engine lights, no blowouts with the stock tires. It happened. Whatever I'm speaking about happened to people, but it hasn't happened to me. Um, I'm really having a good time with the car. I'm really, I really think the car is really appealing. Uh, yes, there are a few things that I wish I would have opted in this car, such as the bow system, such as having the run flat, uh, the spare in the, the trunk. Um, and I really kind of do wish that I had the 360 cam in the car. Well, possibly even with the intelligent cruise control because I do kind of miss the cruise control for my 20, uh, 2015 and my 2007. But otherwise than that, all in all, <laughs> just an ice cream truck, guys. Don't pick on me. 
But all in all, I would recommend this car if you uh if you don't want to opt for the red sport because you know if you want the power, of course you get the red sport. But um if you're looking to get this car because it may be a little bit more cheap, you don't really care about power, you really want looks. My recommendation, guys, um, I would recommend getting a 360 cam. That's like that should be a necessity. If you care about music, which I thought I never really did until I had both options, get the bowls. Um, don't necessarily go for the comfort seat. The sports seats are great. I love well, it's the 3.0 sports, so they're gonna give you the optional sports seats. Oh, and there's another thing I forgot to speak about. For the new 2018 models, my car, if you might have took a notice in the, the video, I don't have sport calipers. I don't have um I don't have the sport calipers. Um, I don't have paddle shifters and well I have on BC coilovers, but um the stock suspension I have on, I don't have the digital dynamic suspension. Pretty much that's an adjustable suspension that you can actually also toggle through and give you a stiffer ride or a more comfort ride. It's like its own Infinity's little mag ride thing. And um what I gotta say about that from driving in cars who had that, I think that suspension is A okay. So I would recommend if you do Get that package. I chose not to get that package because it would have been an added price. I already had BC coilovers I was going to put in a car. I already knew I don't care for paddle shifters. And the BBK, I don't really care for that. That comes as one option. I, there's more money I have to spend. I didn't want that option. I didn't care for it. So I would recommend getting that sport package where you get those three included because not everybody's going to put BC coilovers on their car. And, you know, it's better to have a BBK, pretty much a better brake system. When your cars do, you can stop a lot better. And also the paddles are a little bit of an addition. I just would recommend that. Um, but all in all, I think the car is a really solid car. From what I know, not a lot of people complain about it. Yes, it may not be red sport power, but that stuff could be added and changed if you choose to, you know, if you get into tuning with the car or even getting a JB4 to make the car a little quicker. You could check all that stuff out and the more the cards up here and check out my other videos. I talk about that for this car. But all in all, guys, I really do appreciate the time that you gave me today. I know it might have been a crazy video and I, I'm jumping all around the place, but I just wanted to keep it real with y'all. I want y'all to. I want to give y'all the best video I can and just keep it real because a lot of these other YouTubers, they like to just go nitpick and everything like that. And, you know, I we're regular car people, man. We're regular car people. And they're not going to tell you these things because some of them are funded and paid by these big companies to advertise and produce, you know, whatever the case might be. You know what I'm saying? Everything's advertisement. So thank you again, everybody. If you enjoyed this long video, so please subscribe. If you dislike it, of course, dislike it. Leave a bad comment. But I do appreciate the time that you took out today. Hopefully you do choose to purchase this car. If you choose not, there are little ways to change it to make you like it. But just look into those recommendations I make if you choose to get it. Because I want you to make this purchase and to make a purchase that you really do love and enjoy. Thank you so much for this Hear Me Out from Boost Emotion. I hope you guys have an amazing, beautiful day, night, wherever you are. Enjoy it. Appreciate y'all. Love y'all very much. Thank you.